There's so many times when I'm outside looking at people taking beautiful photos of themselves where I'm like, mmm, there's like one little thing I wish I could change for them in their posing that will make the photo exponentially better, but of course, I'm not gonna go up to them just to give them unsolicited advice. But the great thing is, you clicked on this video, so let me give you solicited advice that would change your posing and your photo game. Seven things that I see people do all the time that they shouldn't be doing, let's get into it. But before we do that, who am I? Because you don't want to be just taking random advice from a random stranger on the interwebs. My name is David Sa, and what is my credentials? First of all, I pop off. I'm popping off on TikTok and Instagram. So I don't know what y'all doing here on YouTube. Come on, I've been doing good stuff out there. But besides that, I'm also a professional photographer for over a decade. Here's my website if you want to check out my work and my services. If you want to book me, go ahead, king and queen. But today, I'm here to give you free Solicited, incredible advice, so let's get into it. So the number one thing that I see happening way too often when it comes to sabotaging your own photo game is people doing these canned poses. And I know you know what I'm talking about, the, the, what else is there? Right? And listen, there's nothing wrong with canned poses. It's comfortable, it's easy to do, but if you're operating within that mindset, there are many things that's limiting you and boxing you in. The way I like to think about posing isn't to have these canned poses to act a certain way in a behavior in front of the camera. Instead, my definition of posing is body language. It's how do we communicate with our body. Imagine you're on a date, okay? And if you operate in the previous mindset where you have limited ways of moving your bodies, and let's say you have two ways of moving your bodies from, imagine you're gonna do that once and then do this once, and then you have to call it a, call it a night because you're done, you're out. No, we're always free to move. How I move my hands like this to present to you an idea is all part of our body language. And you realize what's the beauty of this it expands the potential and the possibilities of poses. You're no longer stuck within this three to five canned poses. So this truly is something I see all the time and uh, something that you can change today. The second thing that I see often is a follow-up of the first one, is that if you have that mindset, you start to have these very stiff, stagnant poses like I demonstrated earlier again, you hit the pose, right? Your photographer, friend, loved one, whatever, family, take a photo and what do you do? Okay, um, what was the other one that I saw on Pinterest and on TikTok? Uh, I'm out of poses, so I'm just gonna keep doing these, right? That's the thing that I see too often. Instead, if you want to adapt this mindset, what does that look like? We want to move. We want to move more freely, just the way I'm moving with my hands. I'm gonna switch up the way I sit. Let's go back to the date analogy. Maybe we are on a date for the first time, so you feel kind of a little bit nervous and awkward at the first time, so you're very proper. But as the night progresses, you get a little bit more comfortable. You're like, oh my gosh, you're laughing. Maybe you have your uh, leg up here and you're relaxed like this, right? Maybe you're leaned back just a little bit. So it's moving as if we're having a conversation. And I realized that's easier said than done. So let's talk about number three. So the next thing that I see all the time is people that have adapted a bit of this and they're like moving around and things like that. But we don't want to just aimlessly move. And for a lot of you who are adapting this for the first time, you might be thinking, how do I just, it's, it's the same thing of me saying be natural. You know, I'm sure you've heard that from a photographer. Oh, just like get comfortable. What does that mean, right? So the easy way to do this and actually tap into our natural body language is to use what I call posing tools. And this is around our environment all the time. What I mean by that, so anything that allows us to relax is a posing tool. So what is something that allows us to relax? Sitting on the floor. We're used to this. Sitting on a couch, a couch. We're used to this. If this was a wall and it wasn't a backdrop, I could lean on that. That's another posing tool. Chairs, tables, all these things are posing tools. What we don't want to do is be 
in the middle of nowhere without posing tools where we have to rely on posing techniques. And if you don't have this, let's say you haven't spent the last decade dedicating your life to this, it's gonna be really tough. We're gonna say things like, what do I do with my hands? I'm sure you've caught yourself saying that often. We don't know what to do with our hands. It's unnatural being in front of a camera. However, again, if you're on a chair, on a couch, whatever, you can just plop down. You know how to get your body to relax and the immediate goal here, the first goal ever in taking any photos is to check on how do you feel. Can you get yourself to a place of feeling comfortable and listen? This will get you so much further than you memorizing in your head, oh my gosh, what was that TikTok video about how to pose on a couch just like this? And then you think, uh, it was this, this angle over here. Oh, here it is. No, just think about how your body relates to this posing tool that we have experienced many times in our life. The fourth most common mistake I see people making is getting into using that posing tool, let's say like leaning, but then being too stiff with it and not sizzling. So let me demonstrate real quick over here. There are times where people still, oh yeah, like let me use that posing tool. But then they go, they go, and then they're just really stiff. They're not shifting their weights and things like that. The weight is very important. So this is the wrong way to do it. Well, if you want to be really regal, then let's be really regal. But we don't want to end up in this middle area where we're like, here. I also express awkwardness because this doesn't feel natural to me. To me, again, like I said, in the fourth, the third point is to get comfortable. And I do that by sizzling into the posing tool, right? How can we do that in a situation like this? Let's say if I'm leaning, I'm not just gonna be up here, I'm going to shift my weight into the shoulder. Now let's say it's something else. Let's say it's something like this, and I'm here. Versus, maybe I can relax in. Maybe I can relax into here. Versus just, right? Relax in, sizzle in, and learn to just like, just like slay. Now the fifth most common mistake I see is people simply not knowing about the techniques of posing. So here we can really start getting to technicals. This is not for everybody. If you don't want to learn about the techniques and everything and practice what I just gave you, you will be way better off than where you started. But if you're really intrigued about learning about posing, here it is. People don't know about the seven posing points. Let's get into it. So we all have seven posing points. And the idea is if you change one of those seven posing points, you get a new pose, right? So I like to start from bottom up. What do we have? We have posing point number one, ankles, knees, hip, shoulder, elbow, wrist, and our neck. How do we utilize all these different things? Starting from the bottom up again. What does it look like to change the ankle posing point? Simply just moving my foot. Crossover, crossover back, wide stance. We can go for little stance. We can rotate, rotate. We can go like this, right? So let's say I went into a wide stance. What can we do with our second posing point, our knees? We can boop, we can go boop. We can also, if we had it closer and like this, I can raise the ankle and the knee and start moving that knee to the side. Now, what does that do for us? Let's say I want to create some shapes with my body because right now we're all lines. But let's say I brought it up like this and move that knee. Do you see it? We're creating that little subtle S curve. Now let's just stick with this example. Let's say we're, our goal is to create more soft feminine curves. We went from ankles to knees now to hip. We can push the hip out. We've successfully shifted our weight onto this side and we created some curves starting from down there and now it's going to here. We went from 
a stick of gum to an avocado. Wow. Right? And then now, ankle, knees, hips, then to shoulder. We can stay very upright here as well. Now we get to mix elements of femininity and masculinity. We can be really powerful up here as well. We can also lean into a softer S curve on top here as well by shifting our shoulder closer to this hip point like so. Do you see the difference from here to here? My energy shifts. Now, what can we do with our elbows? We can go up here. We can go to the side, come up, come here. Our wrists, we can go up, go for a collarbone touch, we can go for a jacket fix. And then lastly, cherry on top, we can move our neck around. And all of that together is what creates a pose in general. The sixth most common mistake I see people making when taking photos and creating poses is thinking that they have to switch up their entire body and the whole concept to make an entire new pose. Now, this is piggybacking off what I said previously about the seven posing points. You don't have to change too many things. In fact, all you have to think about is changing three points. Let me demonstrate. Now, this is really where, remember how I said earlier on when I was talking about the whole using your posing tools and environment to make it easier for you? When you learn this, again, we're getting really technical now. When you learn this, you should be able to create poses on the spot instead of memorizing canned poses. You see how everything is tied together? Yes! So let's pop off on YouTube too, right? Okay, here we go. Uh, we talked about the seven posing points. And I did say, if you switch one of those points, it's a new pose. However, when we're getting started, we're not just gonna go boop, right? That's not a complete pose to me just yet. So when we're getting started, I want you to think about changing at least three of the seven posing points. What do I mean by that? Let's try this out. One, the hip, two, and then, hmm. See, it's thinking, I'm, there's, there's no right or wrong answers. Maybe three. Now that is a lot more complete of a starting pose than if I were to have just done one or two. Now, from here, we apply the seven posing points and we say, okay, what else can we change? The shoulders, the neck, the look, the arms here, arm here, arm here. We can move this to here. We can rotate even more. We can drop this, right? I'm noticing again, I'm changing one thing at a time. And how many, did you count how many poses I did there? Let's see how many poses I did. Great job. Okay, so that's how you get, that's how you get started with a pose. Just think about changing at least three posing points and then start changing one at a time and then you will never run out of a pose again. The last and final thing that I see way too many times happening is people posing but not having the best expression. Now, me making a guide on expressions is very tough. However, through my photo shoots, I photograph the everyday people. These are people that don't get photographed, but somehow for over a decade, I'm able to pull out expressions when not, they're not models, they're not trained models, they're not celebrities, they're not used to being in the uh, camera. So how do I do it? That's the only way I know how to teach you. And that is applying everything that we just learned and what we do with all of that, we make it relevant to us and we see how we feel. We connect to our body, we connect to the language that we're speaking. And once you do that, you start feeling things. You start feeling emotions. And when you start feeling emotions, you start to express. When you start letting yourself be vulnerable and open, you start expressing. What I'm not trying to do is, oh yeah, like flex this muscle right here and go like this and relax. Your that is not me. That I wish I knew how to make a how-to guide on it, how to express. At the moment, this is just how I know how to bring it out of any single person that I photograph. 
and that is by creating this space where they feel good in their body and then they can naturally express how we naturally express because again we've been doing this we've been communicating with our body our entire lives right so let's demonstrate this too what's something that many people have a hard time expressing is feeling sexy connecting with our sexual side or sensual side right how do we express that i have one too many times seen uneducated photographers who tell their models be sexy yes be sexy i hate that i hate that and i always hear it from male photographers too mm -mm. no no so imagine i was told that and i was just like this feeling really awkward and a photographer told me to just be sexy and feel sexy. What the hell does that mean? I'm over here being like this. Ah, uh, I, uh, no, uh, it does not work. However, if I were to guide them into a pose that helped them feel, first of all, when I get into something like this, I feel my curve. I'm not just like this. Right here, I feel very regal. I feel like I'm taking a school photo. No, I'm not gonna feel sexy for you. Okay, but if I go for a little lean here, I feel my curves, I see my curve, I'm connecting with my body, I get to feel, I get to feel my collarbone, and I'm being guided into all these different movements. I hope this translates on camera too, that not only is my physical body changing, the vibe changes. Let me just, in silence, I just move for you two versus me being in an awkward pose and trying to make some sort of expression that conveys what another photographer wants me to do or what I want to do, which I can't. We don't know what, what, is, what is a sexy expression. I don't know. Even as someone who's been doing it for a decade, I don't know. What I do know how to do is put people into a, a language that elicits emotions. Then it makes you feel something and therefore lets you express. I want you to connect with your body, make it make sense to you, and try to prioritize how you feel first before you think about, oh, how do I look? How do I look? So there is my solicited advice on how I see the world as a professional photographer and as someone who's popping off on TikTok and Instagram as your favorite posing king. So if you wanna help me out, like, comment, and subscribe, because I'm sharing. I'm here to stay. And whether you help me out or not, I'm here to give you all the love. If you want to learn more, I think a perfect video to watch is this video right here. Tips on how to be a better Instagram boyfriend or a bestie. In this video, you really learn how to pose. And on this one, you can also learn how to be a better photographer behind the camera for your loved one or your friend. Also, if you've requested the at-home step-by-step guide on how to implement the seven posing points, and if it's been made already in the future, it's gonna be right here. So check that out as well. Till next time, keep slaying, king, queen, royalty, and uh, stay slaying. <laughs>